Yes, uh, it's uh, it is. Mr. Intermarket Analysis. You guessed it. Nope. Not 100 for Kevin uh, Peterson. He's back. Uh, England, uh, the century drought has ended. The he loves injured. batting in Australia. And, uh, he loves batting uh, against Saint Australia. So I think we're going to be batting soon. It's almost it's quite late at the moment. Cheek. Oh, it's face the cheek. Yeah, it's only half two in the morning. Okay, so I'm just bringing you a review of the uh, position FOXY early. 100 for right in the gap between Friday, two fielders. The, uh, it's gone for four. Of December 2013. Okay, so basically, let's have a look what's happening here, and uh, let's try and forecast what's happening with regards to FOXY going into Friday's trading. Okay, so basically, a summary of uh, obviously fundamentals. Today we had the BOE, the ECB. Uh, obviously, we had the US uh, jobs data as well. Um, basically, this week has been an absolute fund. I mean, I, I'll summarise it as a fundamental nightmare. Okay, so you had a lot of currents shifting, uh, and basically, when the the currents shift, uh, or should we say, you had a lot of tremors in the market. So when the central banks are involved, there's a lot of positioning by fundamental traders, which could create the uh, distortions in uh, technicals, fundamentals, and even from intermarket analysis perspective. For example, I mean, take into account the um, the stellar performance of the Nasdaq. Uh, really, it's been it's unmoved, it's unfazed, and yet the, the German DAX has sold off so hard. When uh, normal markets, intermarket analysis states the German DAX and the Nasdaq move in tandem. Also, take into account the S and P 500. Uh, obviously, unfazed, still holding the highs, more or less five or ten points off, and yet the uh, FTSE 100 keeps diving. So. There's a, there's a divergence between European indices and obviously uh, the uh, indices of uh, of, uh, of US and also the Shanghai itself as well. Shanghai was uh, bullish overnight and yet the uh, the FTSE um, and the Dow, uh, so FTSE and the DAX and the German CACs all seem to be diving now. Obviously a lot of that can be, can be attributed to the fact that a lot of the individuals had inside information regarding Draghi being uh, not so dovish, shall we say, okay. Uh, so obviously uh, this, this whole game is rigged to a large extent because uh, as it's been well documented that uh, certain individuals or organisations or hedge funds uh, get uh, email leaks in advance to any uh, central bank meeting. Okay, So usually two or three days in advance or 24 hours in advance or a few hours in advance so they confront on their positions. Uh, as I mean, as traders, all we can do, uh, and a lot of people have found it frustrating, even myself, this week. All we can do as traders is we can trade what we see, not what we expect to see, not what we think we can see, not that, not what we uh, conspire or to see. Okay, uh, we can only trade what we see. Okay, so uh, that's basically uh, all we can do as traders. Um, obviously, there are times that we're going to be successful. Uh, obviously, we uh, we hit our targets, etc. And there's times that we're not going to be successful. So, uh, and also another thing as well, you can't be successful every day, every week, so on and so forth. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I was um, minus 100 during the week. Now I'm plus 55 at the moment. I just had my last Aussie trade short. That I've closed for plus 25 points on the downside. So, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm definitely positive for the week. Um, but usually, I'm, I'm, I'm usually. I usually make two, three hundred, four hundred points a week. So uh, obviously, it's been a frustrating week, definitely for myself, uh, because I'm only on plus fifty, and it's a Friday. Usually, I'm on, I'm on plus two hundred, plus three hundred, and I'm coasting. So uh, certainly, is a frustrating week. But again, again, you have to attribute to the fact that you've had divergence between European and U.S. indices. Okay, you've got central banks, you've got uh, U.S. economic data, so you've got the arguments to taper on, taper off. Uh, a lot of fundamental traders shifting their positions either way, so you have to take all that into consideration. Okay, so uh, it's not just as easy as um, uh, using your technical charts and trying to trade because what you'll find is your technical charts will just be butchered. Okay, they'll they'll get disrespected, the markets will be very volatile, so on and so forth. Okay, so basically what's happening here then? So yesterday obviously I called for a rally on the FTSE. Uh, we did get a rally up to uh, a certain extent. We got to around the six five one. Five region, I can't remember now. Uh, yet the high obviously for the day was 6.520, and uh, we certainly moved higher. Uh, and obviously, the market then reversed and failed to, to push any higher. Okay, even with George Osborne, George Osborne, uh, he came out certain um, uh, headlines that were very bullish. He raised growth forecasts. Okay, same as Draghi, he raised growth forecasts. Uh, US GDP data, uh, or G GDP 
was higher than expected as well. So overall, economic data is bullish, supports the uh, argument of, of uh, share prices or equities moving higher. Okay, you've got the arguments of Kool-Aid and no Kool-Aid. Okay, so always remember, fundamentals trump uh, QE. Okay, so f fundamentals trump technicals, as we already know, but strong fundamentals will always trump any arguments for and against QE. Okay, um, because it's a bottom line that counts. Okay, so uh, so basically, you had strong economic data, and that's uh, obviously that came out of the US, and uh, you had uh, Mr. Osborne sounding bullish on the US economy in terms of its debt to GDP ratio, in terms of its the growth forecast going forward in terms of unemployment rate dropping as well so on and so forth so everything was bullish from that perspective so UK bullish US bullish um, okay so the only argument now we have is okay tapering 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 I find that very hard to uh, believe given the fact that Mr Yellen is such a dove and uh, obviously uh, one of the Fed officials came out later on and stated that uh, he needed more evidence okay so uh, obviously NFP tomorrow another you know it'll be a jungle tomorrow uh, so we'll see exactly how the market trades. But let's just see what's happening with the FTSE. Uh, after I've summarised all the fundamental events, let's have a look what's uh, happening with the FTSE. Okay, so basically FTSE is at a key pivotal support level here. Okay, uh, so basically uh, we've had this double top here. Obviously the market's failed ever since. And we are into previous uh, resistance equals support. Okay, so this 6500 level is a key pivotal uh, zone or area, should I say. Okay, so keep an eye on this level here. Um, let me just draw in a trend line. You've got key trend line support as well. Okay, so basically 6500, one hell of a support level. Okay, very, very hard for the market to penetrate that. Now, that obviously coincides, that's a weekly chart, so that coincides with the daily. The daily has pierced the 200 MA uh, and is into horizontal support as well. Okay, so previous resistance equals support. Okay, and this is on here. Okay, so remember, market can always pierce it, it's fine, but the 200 MA should certainly act as support on there. Okay. Let's have a look at the micro time frame now for the FTSE itself. Okay, so let's have a look at the 60 minute chart first. Okay, so 60 minute chart, you have a bearish channel. We've broken out the bearish channel. We had a bullish engulfing candle, then again another bullish engulfing candle. So a bullish continuation pattern here. We are consolidating within the two green candles, which is a positive sign. You have a symmetrical wedge, and I expect this wedge to break out northwards. Okay, strong economic data. Okay, it certainly propels us higher. Okay, especially commodities as well. And I'll look into I'll explain common commodities shortly. Okay, so I had this inverted head and shoulders formation, which I expected to play out. It failed. Okay, even with Mr. George Osborne's speech, so on and so forth, we failed to do that. Uh, obviously, tapering concerns uh, generally tend to dominate. The reason why that failed is because everybody had access to the uh, uh, Draghi speech or Draghi minutes. Okay, they already knew Mr. Draghi had already emailed uh, all the dirty inside traders exactly what he was going to do. So hence the reason why Europe was selling off quite viciously and obviously gap lower as well, even though uh, China was higher overnight, although you can argue that Nikkei was down. Okay, so that's certainly something to take into consideration. But for now, uh, okay, again, like I said, we trade what we see. I witnessed inverted head and shoulders formation, so I traded what I actually could see on my charts. Okay, and obviously given the fact that economic data out in the UK has been pretty bullish as of late. Okay, so basically now we have a bearish channel. Okay, this channel I expect to break out northwards. Uh, we could be brewing here. We've got a left shoulder here. This is the head. Uh, and obviously we create a right shoulder tomorrow. Up we go. Okay, so watch out. Resistance level number one will be 6530. And then the 200 MA, which is at 6540. So that certainly should be a level. You do have the unfilled gap above, which is acting like a magnet. So 6596 cannot be ruled out. That will certainly be tagged. Okay, on, on the upside before we, if we ever do go down, we'll see exactly how that transpires but for, but for now watch out for that so you've got 6 uh, 5 uh, 30 so obviously you've got the 6 5 to 15 level watch out for that then you've got 6 5 30 watch out for that and 6 5 40 so these are all targets I expect uh, on the upside so I remain long DAX and FTSE going into tomorrow and uh, looking for further upside okay folks now let's share one chart uh, one more chart of the, uh, the ch chart of copper this is the argument that I have for a bullish FTSE. Okay, so obviously you've got this uh, trend line here. You've got an inverted head and shoulders part target of, of around $3.4. Okay, so watch out for this inverted head and shoulders, which again is bullish for the uh, for the FTSE. Okay, so obviously copper higher means uh, commodities higher. Commodities higher means miners higher and uh, oil stocks higher. And obviously uh, that causes the FTSE to go higher as well. If you look at crude oil, 
again it's broken out its bullish channel next char next target now is a 200 MA around the $99 level given the fact that strong um, uh, GDP out of US uh, strong uh, uh, employment details uh, employment data out of the US uh, raised growth forecast by Draghi and uh, Mr. Mr. Carney okay or Mr. Osborne should I say so again that supports uh, the oil price going higher okay adding the fact that gold is certainly making a base as well so if you we look at a chart of gold this is certainly beginning to make a base it's broken out of its bearish channel again uh, as well okay and, and looking to move northwards okay so keep an eye out for that next level here will probably be around the 1275 and possibly up to the 1320 level going upwards okay so again that's another argument for gold to go higher if gold goes higher given the fact that the NFP data is weak tomorrow I can't see it being any uh, spectacularly strong um, uh, given the fact that a lot of the data was skewed even the ADP data is skewed to a certain extent but should still be good growth but not as good as uh, uh, the uh, the anti QE chaps out there would like and uh, Miss Yellen as we all know she's an ultra ultra drove dove I can't see her tapering in December at all okay so that should obviously support the uh, the argument of gold going higher as well and also given the fact that you've got the Bitcoin crashed uh, so Bitcoin crash and obviously that caused a spike in gold because Bitcoin is a substitute at the moment for um, gold okay and obviously the Chinese are talked against Bitcoin so which should force money back into gold as well so to take that into consideration also given the fact that strong economic data generally supports gold anyway okay so bear that in mind and also India uh, economic data overnight was pretty stellar and obviously their stock markets going higher so again more further support for gold okay so keep an eye out for that so all these arguments are basically commodities higher if commodities are higher what do you think what happens to FTSE FTSE goes higher so bear that in mind okay so uh, call it call it a day there folks or should I say call it a night or call it a morning now it's almost three o'clock uh, risk on risk off wax on wax off goodbye now.